I know it looks like plywood, but it's not. I'm about to embark on what I think is the biggest project I've done so far. So there's going to be a lot of firsts for me today. And you folks know I'm fairly new to lasers, so there's going to be a lot of learning, probably more for myself, but I'm hoping along the way there'll be a few things that'll help you out as well. I think it might be a long video today on LaserNug. So at a high level, I'm going to be working with a few firsts today. I'm going to be doing the first material test card I've ever done. Over the last six and a half months or so, as you folks know, I do my settings from scratch and I've kind of strayed away or stayed away from material test cards, but I'm going to give it a shot today only because I have some preliminary type settings and that gives me kind of a bit of a base to create my material test card in Lightburn. Second thing is I'm using what's called craft plywood. It looks like plywood, but there's no plies in the middle. It's MDF. It has a few benefits, I think, or advantages over plywood. You may have found, depending on the grade of that plywood or the different types of plywood, you may run into inconsistencies between the plies as to how consistent or how full the plies are. You may run into areas where you have gaps in the ply, or you may run into areas where you've got more or less glue in between those plies. With an engineered material like this MDF, it's got a consistent core all the way through. So I shouldn't be running into any of those issues. It should be a little more stable to be cutting through and to be using for projects. Even this 1 8 thick or 3 mil stock stays pretty much flat. I bought this stuff about six, seven months ago. I just hadn't tried it yet. And it's been sitting on my shelf. And as you can see, it's still flat. So unlike regular plywoods or Baltic birch or generally any thin piece of wood that sits in your garage for several months, this stuff doesn't really crown or warp. It just sits flat. So we're going to give it a try today, both 1 8 or 3 mil, and I'm also going to be using 6 mil or quarter inch as well. Another first, we're not using acrylic today to make this sign. We're going to be using that craft board and we're also going to be painting it. And I'm going to be testing out or trying out this Rust-Oleum paint. And as well, I've got this Bare Premium type paint. I believe they're both oil based, but I needed to try both of them because I wanted certain colors and Rust-Oleum didn't have all the colors I wanted, so I grabbed a few cans of this as well to help out. They're painted surfaces, but I'm not going to be trying out Gorilla Glue today or Tight Bond. I'm going to try out this Star Bond. It's called Gap Filler Thick, and I've seen it on a couple of YouTube channels, and apparently it will bond this MDF or this craft board together really well, even though they're painted surfaces. I guess we'll find out. And lastly, I'm going to be using a 2.5 inch lens on this bolt. I know the one and a half doesn't do a great job of cutting through the thicker Baltic birch and I'm not sure how well or how much easier or harder MDF is to get through. So we're going to start off with the two and a half, do the material test cards. If it works out great and I get a good result, we'll stick with it. If not, I'll run the material test cards again, but with the four inch lens. Let's do this. In Lightburn, I'm going to run up to laser tools here on the top toolbar. If you come down towards the bottom, you'll see Material Test. I'm going to title my card. That way when it prints out, I'll have it for record for later and I'll know what it was. I do want 10 tries. I'd like to get it as specific as possible. I know I need less than 10 millimeters in order to cut through with some lenses. So I'm going to use here on the left under Vertical. I'm going to start this off at 5 millimeters. And my max, I'm going to max out at probably, I would say, well, let's do 30. I know for sure, once you start to get up that speed, it's not going to cut through cleanly, just from past experience. And my height, let's just make it one centimeter or 10 millimeters. I'm going to come over here to the middle under horizontal columns. I'm going to keep 10, it's power. Well takes a lot of power so let's just start at 70 and let's go to 100 and again my width to match I'll just make that 10 millimeters so that should give me my card I think everything is there I've got a proper title and let me just take a look at what it might look like before I actually run it okay, I'm gonna preview it 3 mil craft plywood cut 2.5 interval and frequency I think are just the defaults of the bolt I didn't touch those I've got speed down one axis and I've got power across the other 
Okay, that looks good. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I don't need to send this to the bolt somehow. I'm going to use these buttons here on the right to run the card straight off the screen here. So let's throw that piece of craft wood into the bolt and get things set up. I'm assuming I have to set an origin. So I'll do that right now. And I believe I should probably autofocus. And I'm going to play here just to, to show you. You use the buttons right here in this window for the test. If I click frame, you'll see it immediately frames it for you. Which means I think we're in good shape. And I believe I can start now and we should see it work. This higher quality wood I'm currently getting out of a place called KJP Wood. Uh, wood products. They're up in Ottawa, Ontario. And so far, I'm pretty pleased with the products I've received. A couple of other things I believe I figured out here. You've got three settings that you can change down here at the bottom of this window. Here you've got edit material settings. If you click that, I believe this is the default, so to speak, for what it's going to do on that test card based on the material. And it's been defaulted here to a high air. It's line mode, one pass. And this is, I think, a default to cut. And then your settings, I guess, in your tests will change. But the key here is that it's set to line and it's got high air on it. If I look at the text setting, it has the same default here. Line, high air, same settings. And similarly, this last box says edit border setting. Had I caught this earlier, I probably should have pumped this up to one of the cut settings so it would actually cut the card right out of my plywood or my craft wood. I'll probably just run it through the table saw now or maybe just make a box, set my cut settings so I can cut them out of the material. But again, it's set to line and high air. So although I haven't tested this yet, if I had planned on doing engraved settings, I think I would have come over here and changed this to fill and either left the air on or off. I usually keep it off when I'm engraving and then that, I believe, sets kind of the default settings for the material, and then it will run your test. But in, instead of being in a line mode, it'll be in a fill mode. Let me run the six mil, and then we'll get together and take a look at what the results are. So let's take a look at our three mil or our one eighth. That was the outcome without me touching or trying to push any of those blocks or those tests out of place. All of those blocks or those squares fell out all on their own when I picked up the piece. So that's the end result of it right here. And based on these results, I then change the parameters of the set for the quarter inch or the six mil. If we take a look at the back, you'll see that there's minimal scorching anywhere. There's the odd spot, but not really anything to be concerned about, especially if I'm gonna be painting this. This six mil was a bit of a different story. Uh, there's a lot more gradient or resin marks from these cuts. I changed my speed parameters from between five and 15 millimeters based on the fact that it couldn't make it through the three mil. So I knew it was definitely not gonna make it through the six mil. And we've run it again. All of these between 70 and 100% at five mil, they all fell out. So I've got a bit of a range here to work with and I've got it in very small increments. So I know if I'm cutting cleanly here, I don't need to put it to 100%. So step one is complete.
Well, good morning. Welcome back. And I mean really early in the morning. It's supposed to pour rain today and I want to get all the paint done on these pieces. And I want to get them done outside for the most part. A little more airy. A couple of things I wanted to point out before we go to the next step. Being my first time working with this craft plywood, I was a little surprised at how much residue or resin came off on the pieces. As you folks can see in the picture, I'll post. I imagine I shouldn't have been surprised because I know MDF is compressed and made with a lot of glues or resins. So I imagine that's what we're seeing there. The challenge I have, of course, is that a lot of these pieces are very tiny, especially the lettering, very tiny, and they've got trailing edges. I do like the font I picked because I think it fits or suits this type of sign. It's just very, very fragile. So I'm not going to be able to sand most of these pieces as I normally would. But what I will do is I'll take a damp cloth, just try to make sure I get any loose dirt or particles off them. And then we're going to get to paint. I've got five different colors I'm going to try out on this sign. More so just to see how the colors react or show up or what the final result is on this type of plywood. I wanted a wood surface, which is why one of the... Re <coughs> I chose this craft plywood because I wanted a nice wood background and I'm hoping that with or without the resin on them that the paint will adhere and stick and I guess that's part of this whole test. As I may not have mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've never done this before. Usually before I do a video I've done some kind of preliminary work but I thought I'd try something different today and I decided we'd just do it together. <laughs> that way we'll see what works, what doesn't work. You also might have noticed that I scored the back piece so that I could find a spot to be able to place my other components or pieces. I'm not sure if the scoring is going to show up after the paint. And if it doesn't, I have a plan B, which, you know, thinking about it further now, probably should have been my plan A. But we'll see. Both this Rust-Oleum and this bare paint is supposed to be paint and primer. So, in theory, it should be able to cover up those resin spots. But we'll see if it comes through the paint at the end of the day. Uh, morning it's day three let's finish the sign parts are all looking good paint turned out nice too a couple of notables before we begin gluing the paint adhered really nicely to the surface the score marks we talked about do actually show up very very lightly through the paint so i think i've got just enough there that i can figure out where my pieces go one thing i should have done is on these raised pieces I also should have scored the inside letters and I didn't so I'm gonna to have to wing that and I'm not too great at that don't really have a straight eye but we'll be all right especially since this is a whole test this entire sign but all of my colors and the pieces seem to have turned out great my letters are super tiny so I've got a few utensils to help out got a sheet down just as a backup got my nitro gloves got my star bond a little bit of coffee I have my pick tweezers and I snuck up into my daughter's room and I snuck out with these little pointed tweezers. Hopefully I won't get any glue on them because I don't think she'll be happy if I do. Lots of paper towel, a little spare, a rag, some water. The instructions don't say how long that glue is going to take to cure or to, to, to stick or to fix. So I've got a couple of spare boards here as well as a big weight. As I glue different pieces together I'm going to throw the weight on top of it at least for a couple of minutes just to help it bond. And otherwise, I think we're in good shape. Let's finish her up. <laughs> this star bond came with two tips, as well as some really, really tiny, almost syringe style add-on tips, which I think are going to be really helpful with these tiny, tiny letters. Geez, that sticks quick. Gotta be fast. They weren't kidding. All you need is a tiny drop and it immediately bonds. Another benefit to this glue is it says it should dry clear. So if I mess up a bit, Hopefully you won't see any glue sticking out the sides. It's 
So just a, a quick note here. I did read the instructions thoroughly. I also looked online. For some reason it said I needed some kind of an accelerator to get this to stick. And it talked about how you've got extra time if you don't use the accelerator to position your pieces. Well, I didn't have a whole lot of time there. She sticks down pretty tight and pretty quick. Boy, that stuff sticks quick. There is not a lot of time to fool around. So hey, I know it was a long video, so I'm not going to go back and summarize all of my learnings and the things I could have done differently, because I think I covered those off in each step. But I do want to finish off this Starbond Thick. This is great stuff. And the fact that they give you those tiny, almost syringe-like tips really help with the tiny letters and the tiny pieces that are going into your project. I think the sign turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with the way the paint turned out. I can see the wood grain in the background, which being a sign that I'm putting up at the cabin, I wanted that wood grain effect. Went on nice and even. Not sure if I'm going to throw a coat of varathane on it or not, because I kind of like that raw look. But all in all, I think we learned a lot. Turned out great, and I'm going to be hanging it proudly in the kitchen. I appreciate you folks hanging out, and I really appreciate all the support on the channel so far. I hope some of the things that I've done over the last few months have been helpful to you, and I really appreciate it when you take the time or you have the time to provide some advice or some alternatives in the comments below each video. Helps me learn a lot and helps to speed up that learning curve on the laser. Have a great week. Please be kind to each other, and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.